How does a nation founded on the ideals of Western liberal democracy, shaped and molded by the sacrifices of the best of us, so that those of us here today can continue to light the fire of freedom that was paid for in the blood and tears of their relentless and unwavering defense of liberty, fall so far, so quickly, as to turn on these very ideals and freedoms when they should matter the most. If somebody told you that Australians who share this history, this identity, the very beneficiaries of this liberty, would sit by and let their fellow countrymen be coerced, assaulted and humiliated in public so as to be forced to give up their most basic human rights and freedoms at the behest of governments, unelected bureaucrats, unaccountable authorities, with the help of the militarized police state and mainstream media sellouts and multinational corporations, it would be near impossible to imagine such a possibility. Yet here we are, bruised, battered, ignored and abused, watching failed leaders that ask time and time again for so much of us for the greater good, for the country, without consequences themselves, without giving up the very same things they took from the people, ready and primed to take even more. Ready to divide us, label us, dehumanize us, all in the name of policy objectives that have no certainty. Our freedom will be traded once more, to make the job of governance easy, to usher in the new normal where they ask and we submit without a right of reply, because of course, they know best. However, take one look at history. If we learn nothing, we are doomed to repeat the worst of our mistakes. No government, no dictator, no authoritarian has ever said that what they are doing is not for the best interests of their people and country. War is always for peace. Genocide is to protect the nation state. Segregation, apartheid is humane, right and for your own safety. Slavery. Slavery was backed by science and religion and the work of the intellectual ruling class of its day. Once we see the side effects, and the adverse reactions to our societies. It is often too late. All we can do is pledge to never repeat the same mistakes. But here we are on the precipice of creating two distinct classes of Australians presented to us by the government as a new deal. The creation of second class citizens through segregation of families, friends and neighbours to coerce the population to accept the government's wishes medical freedom, consent and choice is no longer about the individual, it is now just an instrument of the state, like a gun to your head, it is used to make you submit, so you can reclaim what was already yours. Want to say goodbye to a dying member of your family in another state in your own country? Papers please. Show us your domestic passport that proves you have submitted to our demands. What we do today and how we respond to this grievous overreach by the establishment will define our future. Generations from now need not question our steadfast resolve to defend freedom from the very people we elected to govern and ensure our rights. We must draw a line. Enough is enough. We have been pushed to the limit, but we will never consent to this atrocity. Not because we are anti, not because we are rebels, but because despite the deluge of fear and threats, we have not forgotten our responsibility to fight for liberty. Tell the government to remember their place. Assert your right to be free. Fighting for freedom is a constant struggle. That's what makes it worthwhile. A reward for submission. A reward of freedom for coercion and threats will never be freedom. Defend your rights, defend your liberty, defend your freedom and say no, I do not consent to any of this.